more land dedicated to growing crops and less restored to its natural state. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, not true at all. Welcome back to another video. We have had a heap of requests for a response video to ASAP Signs, who asked the question, what would happen if the world went vegetarian? Well, the first thing we'd like to say is, how come we're not asking the question, what would happen if the world went vegan? Vegetarian is so 2006, <laughs> it's 2016, let's cut the crap, let's talk about veganism. That's right, if the world went vegetarian, that'll so have to drop the eggs and drop the dairy and get the full education, make the full connection and go vegan. That's what would happen. All right, let's watch this video. Now, just to put this into perspective, this channel is huge. Five million subscribers. And at the time of watching this video, they had one point, almost 1.3 million views. Wow. And if their video, Should You Shave Your Pubes, is anything to go by, <laughs> uh, they've probably got another million more of their subscribers due to watch this video. So. And the answer is no, by the way. No. You should not shave your pubes. There you go. Luca told me that you shouldn't, <laughs> by the way. I don't know. But All right. To protect you. <laughs> Let's get on with it. What if the world went vegetarian? Chances are you or someone you know is a vegetarian. So we thought we'd try a thought experiment. What would happen if everyone in the world was suddenly a vegetarian? What effect would it have on our lives and the planet? Before we begin, full disclosure, none of us at ASAP Science are vegetarians, and the worldwide rate of vegetarianism is fairly low, ranging from about 4 to 5% in the US and Canada to a little over 30% in India. As a result, there are currently about 20 billion chickens, 1.5 billion cows, over a billion sheep, and nearly a billion pigs in the world. Without any meat-eating humans to provide a market, whole herds of domestic animals would disappear. And this would free up vast quantities of- <laughs> Okay. Those animals don't just drop out of the sky. We breed those animals for food. So we have those large quantities because we breed them not because they would naturally reproduce that much and not because they just pop, 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 pop up all over the place. We breed those numbers. And I also felt like you might have been trying to downplay uh, vegetarianism in terms of numbers because people want to know what most people are doing. They'll tend to go with that, you know, that sort of herd mentality, mob mentality. And so by saying, you know, oh, there's only, you know, four to five percent in the US, blah, blah, blah. Oh, they're a small group, you know, don't worry yeah. about them. They're Actually, there's about 600 million vegetarians in the world, which is more than all of the populations of the 28 European Union countries. So that's, uh, you know, about eight and a half percent of the world's population. So it's not as small as, uh, you know, you might think. Two. Combined with the loss of forests and other effects, livestock production is responsible for about 15% of global greenhouse gas emissions. Wrong. According to a 2009 World Watch Institute report, up to 51% of greenhouse gas emissions are attributable to the animal agriculture industry. And even if we take a more conservative figure, uh, the United Nations back in 2006 said 18% which is more than all the world's planes, trains, and automobiles put together. In fact, many scientists believe that reducing meat consumption may be one of the best strategies for managing climate change. Yes, A vegetarian is. diet would also greatly reduce water consumption. Around 70% of global freshwater consumption is used in agriculture. Are there any downsides to a vegetarian diet? Well, we'd be left without a cheap source for many byproducts of livestock like leather from animal hides or animal fats which are used in cosmetics, candles, and detergents. And so we should keep slaughtering animals so we have a cheap source to make these byproducts, lipstick and candles. And leather. I mean, which can all be made in the vegan version. Absolutely. You've got soy candles, yeah. you've got faux leather, you've got detergents and cosmetics that haven't been tested on animals and don't contain animal ingredients. Yeah, so we're already making those products. Exactly. Vegetable-based alternatives do exist, their yeah. production would need to increase, meaning more land dedicated to growing crops and less restored to its natural state. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, not true at all. Currently, we're growing enough grain to feed 10 billion people, but there are only 7 billion people on the planet. So when we, the reason we're growing that grain is because we're feeding up to 50% of that world grain to livestock to fatten them so that we can slaughter them and eat them. The world went vegan overnight and we stopped breeding those animals in, in those quantities. Um, we would have, th you know, grain for three to feed three billion more people than we actually have on the planet. So that grain, 
like soy, for example, one of the main grain crops, could be used to make all of those uh, other products. Exactly. We've already got those resources. Basically, we've got more than we need. Yeah. So we're going to be reducing. We don't need to keep adding. Correct. More complicated fact is that raising and processing animals is a full-time job for more than 1 billion people, most of whom are small-scale farmers in the developing world. While some may be able to move to producing milk or eggs, or even growing vegetable crops, many would be faced with their way of life becoming obsolete. Of course, any- Exactly what happened to the slave owners in the deep south of America. Yeah. We cannot justify the torture, rape, confinement and murder of animals because it's going to put people out of work. You've got to find a different job. There's going to be different jobs created. Increase in vegetarianism is likely to be a gradual process rather than a sudden cutoff. And Not true. A lot of people go vegetarian or vegan overnight when they've seen something, they've read something, they've made a connection. Going vegan or vegetarian is as easy or as difficult as you choose to make it, just like any decision in life. So it doesn't have to be a gradual process. It is for some people, but it doesn't have to be at all. It's simply a matter of receiving the education and then connecting your brain with your heart and having the willingness to you know, use them both. It's a no-brainer, really. The trends are actually in the opposite direction. In places like India and China, people are becoming wealthier and as a result consuming more meat which effectively cancels out the declines we see in other countries. So we- uh, Okay, so the reason that India and China are increasing their meat is because guess what? They're copying the West. They see what we're doing in the West and that's what they want. So the more Westerners that turn to a plant-based diet, the more that's going to actually influence these other um, developing countries. Absolutely, because prior to Western influence, Asian countries like China and India have largely plant-based diets. And it's only because they're trying to emulate you know, the affluence of the West that they're now consuming more animal products. Tried to go vegetarian for 21 days straight as an experiment in our new ASAP Thought episode. Again, it's like Yoda said, do or do not, there is no trying. But anyway, we're going to get to this video too. And we're sick of this shit. Of this. It looks good, but it's a veggie -ish. I'm tired. I feel a bit better today. I took... They're eating salad. Where are the carbs? Oh my yeah. god.